Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 83. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name is Ellis Hughes and you can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward and you can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And you can find both of us simultaneously on Twitter at, at Tidy underscore explained. Or hit us up on Gmail, tidy.explained at gmail.com. We've gotten uh, three or four really cool questions over Great the questions. past two weeks. Um, so once we wrap up this Tidy Models series, we're going to hit those. Mm -hmm. uh, if you prefer, you could always open an issue in the GitHub repo. Or um, we've also had some people leaving great comments on the YouTube channel, comments, questions, thoughts, and ideas. Uh, all of those things, um, will th they're coming. We we'll bake them into new episodes as we go. <laughs> We're and looking then, at of them. Course, if, even yeah. if we don't reply, we look at them and we really appreciate them. It, it, exactly. And then, of course, uh, on our Patreon page, um, if you like what we're doing and you want to buy us a beer or some coffee, we are beverage fans in yeah. the uh, in the Pacific Northwest, so that would be um, amazing, but mm -hmm. no pressure otherwise. Yep, patreon.com slash tidy underscore explained. And we really appreciate that. All right, now that we've been talking for a little bit, let's get into the episode. Uh, and so this week, we continue our series on tidy models, but this time we're going to do a, uh, another model type um, and discuss how you'd apply that in tidy models. So Patrick, can you uh, take us through that as I share our screen? Yeah, so we probably got about two or three tidy model uh, episodes left in us, and we're just trying to uh, expose y'all to how you can kind of transition within the framework to different types of models. So today we're going to be going over a naive base classifier. So similar to last week the, the, where we did a, um, a random forest, a naive base classifier is a probabilistic classifier. Uh, and it, it does have some assumptions such as independence amongst the predictors, which uh, we're dealing with the penguins data. So obviously there is no independence here um, because it's anthropometric data on penguins. Uh, yeah. So obviously it's the same penguin being measured on different things uh, within their body. But, but naive base classifiers are pretty cool because even with that assumption being there, they often do competitively well compared to other probabilistic classifiers, even if you disregard that assumption. So we're going to disregard that assumption today. We're going to jump into the naive base classifier and we're going to see how it does on the penguins data set, which we used uh, last week. Yep. All right, so let's get going with this. All right, since we're using in our markdown, we're going to set some of our uh, knitter option chunks here. We're setting echo to be true so that uh, if you render the report, all the code will show up as well. Uh, next, we're going to load the libraries that we're going to be using for this week. And so, of course, we have Tidyverse for all our data manipulation needs. Uh, tidy models to serve the framework uh, that we're using for our machine learning models. Uh, Palmer penguins, which is holding the data we're using. And then this is a new one, uh, library to scrim. And so this is part of tidy models, uh, but it doesn't seem like, at least for me, apparently not, uh, automatically loaded. Um, and this is uh, a package that we're going to need in order to use naive Bayes. Um, so you may or may not need to load this library. We'll see. But I guess it's not too bad to like explicitly call it. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the data we have. We went over it last week. But there's uh, you know eight different columns here. Uh, we've got the species of the penguin. Each row represents a different penguin. Uh, the island at which they measure the penguin, uh, the bill, the bill length and in depth, the flipper length, um, and then the body mass, and then the sex, whether they're male or female. Uh, we're gonna quickly look across this and go, okay, where are the NAs in this data set? As you can see, we've got two NAs in flipper or bill length, depth, and flipper length, and body mass, and then 11 of them. We don't know what the sex was. I don't know. It happens. Maybe uh, a researcher forgot to record it or something. I don't know. It's it's real world data. So what we're going to do is we're missing these. So let's do a quick look at that. Um, as you can see here, these two penguins have NAs for all the information that, that exists for them. So they're not useful for us, for the modeling that we're gonna be doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just drop those penguins off of our data set so we don't use them uh, because there's nothing we can do with them. And then we're gonna split our, our data here for into a training and test data set uh, so that we can train 
our model on, on one set and then test to see how well we performed on the test set. Uh, it's a random process, so we're gonna set our seed. Um, we're gonna use the function initial split on this cleaned data set and we're gonna stratify by species. So that'll make sure that species shows up in both the train and the test set. Um, and then we're gonna call that penguin split. We're gonna pull out the training set using the training function and assign that to train and then testing data set and assign it to test. So I didn't print this, but so we've got 246 in our training data set, 86 in our test data set, and we have a total of 342 penguins. Patrick, do you wanna take it from here? Yep, so one other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take those 256 uh, training observations and we're just going to further split them. It's still kind of relatively small data. So we're going to do a little bit of cross-fold validation where we're going to do five folds. We're going to take a random subset of data and, be, and basically take a random subset of data, build a model on that subset of, let's say, 204 observations, and then test it on 52 observations. And we're going to do this random uh, process five times. So we're essentially going to build five models on our training set. And this is the same process that we've gone through for the past uh, four or five episodes. So this um, is two months it, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, 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 this is what we would recommend doing. Uh, now we're going to specify our model. So we're kind of working through our, our normal workflow that we've sort of established over the past couple weeks. Um, I load the library KLAR um, uh, because we need that for the uh, bit naive base engine. Um, so I just load it here, and then we're gonna set up this naive, uh, naive base model. So we're gonna use that naive base function, which can, comes from the des descrim package that was loaded earlier. We wanna set our mode to classification, because remember, this is a classifier. We're trying to predict or forecast into one of three classes of penguin. And then we're gonna set that engine to use the KLAR package. So now we set up this model. So now we have a model specified. We haven't done anything yet to the data. Uh, we haven't made any forecasts. We haven't built any models. We just specified this is the model that we want to use. And now we're ready to move into setting up our recipe, which again, is where we do all of our pre-processing. So we have a little bit of pre-processing to do here. The first thing is we set up our recipe by saying, hey, this is the model that we want to use. So we want to predict species from all other variables. We're going to use the training data. So that was the data that we split out. And then we're going to do a, a, a little bit with that. So I guess we haven't really mentioned, we forgot to mention last week, this dot here in your formula. Oh, yeah, formula. Yeah. I guess we never actually defined that. And what that means is we're going to train species tilde on everything else. That's what the dot represents. And all so what does everything things. else represent? Well, everything else is all the other columns inside the training data set. And so that could potentially be species island, build length, build depth, flipper length, body mass, sex year. So basically everything else there could be. Mm -hmm. Sorry, continue. <laughs> uh, and, and of course, if you wanted a more specific model, you could simply remove the dot and type in whatever features you thought uh, you'd like to use. I think last week we left out year and island, but mm -hmm. um, you, yes. you know, this, this we're just putting in everything just for the sake of uh, showing how it, how it works, right? Um, the next step within our recipe is we're going to do a little bit of imputation. Remember, we originally had 11 NAs for uh, uh, species sex. Um, and we removed two, so that left us with nine. And so we're just gonna use a little bit of KNN imputation to impute whether the penguin is male or female based on the three nearest neighbors. So the nearest penguins of the same anthropomorphic measurements. And then we're updating the role of year and island. So basically what we're saying, okay, so this is, a, this is an interesting piece. So up at the top, we put in species tilde dot, that's right. Okay, so we're basically saying, hey, predict species from all of the variables within the model. Except once we get down here in the recipe, we say, you know what? We don't think year and island are gonna be very valuable to us. So we're gonna update their role to be ID, which is, is a way of saying within that dot, do everything except that those that are set to ID, right? So we don't want those variables to be used in the model. And so there we see that they are no longer being 
uh, classified as a predictor. They have no predictor role within our naive Bayes model going forward. All right. So now we've set up the recipe. Uh, Ellis, you want to go through the workflow? Sure thing. So as we've done the last several weeks now, we set up our workflow by using the initializing function workflow. Uh, we add our recipe, which is the pre-processing that we're going to do. We just defined that. And so that's done with the add recipe function. And then we're going to add our model as well. And that is going to be that naive Bayes model that we just created there. And so we're going to run that. And so now this is how our data will get processed. First, it'll uh, be pre-processed pre using our uh, recipe. And then it'll run this naive Bayes model using the KLAR. Uh, library. So now we're go going to go through and do an initial fit on the uh, training data just to, to give us an idea of how well the model is going to perform. So you typically do this uh, if you're tuning the model, but this is an IEB, so there's not much tuning that we're going to be doing here. Uh, but once again, this is just kind of good practice uh, to get to, to, to be doing here. So we're going to take our new workflow that we defined, we're going to fit it using the resamples. And we're going to define those resamples as the CV folds. And so it's going to run the training, the, the subset of the uh, training data set, the one or the two, four fifths uh, train on that, and then test to get metrics on that one fifth. And then it's going to do that five different times. So we're going to run that and we're going to get, uh, it's, it's running through here. And so it's interestingly, it's got some uh, warnings that it's printed out here. Uh, what we think that is, is that it's actually very confident in the predictions that it's making. So it's saying a numerical zero probability. Um, so it's saying that there's no chance for it to be um, one of the species, which, you know, you normally wouldn't expect. Uh, and that's why it's warning us about that. But we know uh, by looking at the data that there is some, th these measurements here are pretty defining there, as to what there's the, some divergence between the gen 2 and the other two species I yeah think. so it's not too surprising that that's happening but that that's because we understand the data that we that we're that we're using here um, but because we did fit resamples um, on this crossfold validation we can look at the performance of our model using collect metrics on our now fit model here and so what we're going to see here is that the multi-class accuracy of our naive Bayes model is 0.957 on average. So this is across the five different folds here with a standard error of 0.0114. And so it's, uh, it's not moving too much in the accuracy. So basically, it's actually fairly accurate a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, next, the ROC AUC is 0.99. So uh, really freaking accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. highly specific Pro probably too accurate <laughs> yeah so too, too accurate this, to generalize yeah if you saw this in the real world you'd go mm, i don't trust this <laughs> uh but yeah so patrick why don't you take us through this this last set here all right let's uh bring it back home we fit our model we've got what we like and we're ready to apply it to our testing data so we're going to create this nb final object we're going to take our entire workflow and we're going to pipe in the last fit of the model um, on the split data so again we get the same type of warnings as it went through and fit this so it fit into this uh, split data so basically what we did here was we we, we took that last workflow, we fit the data. Now, remember, in the step above, we fit this to the five folds, the cross fold. What we've done now is we've taken this last fit and we've fit it to all of the training data. And then now we've tested it on our, on our actual um, outcome data. Actually, we fit it on all of that data, yeah, and tested it on the, on the uh, test data. So we fit it on our training data, tested on our training data, on our testing data. Now we collect the metrics, so we look at how well it did. Uh, obviously, it got a little worse, which is common. Um, it's to that's, be expected. That's to be expected. It's new data. It's never seen it before. It learned from the previous data. It tried it on some new data. It got a little bit worse. We're going to take those predictions, and we're going to build a data set called NB test predictions. So we're going to bind the columns of our test data set, which we had originally split at the first uh, kind of the first or second first or second chunk of this uh, series we're going to put in the 
and be final collect predictions. So that's going to be this basically this tibble of predicted data sets. So here we see that we get our um, outcomes from the 86 test set uh, uh, test observations. Dot pred, and then the name of the species is the probability for that observation of being one of those three species. The row is the row number that it came from, from the original data set. And then the predicted class here is going to be majority rules. So pred class uh, Adele was 99% predicted to be this observation. So it takes the majority rules. It says it's Adele. And we can see then the ground truth is the final column called species. And that's where we see the outcome. So we're going to take everything that has dot pred. We don't need the species column because that's already in the test data set. We're going to take anything that starts with dot pred, which is our predictions, and now we've got a cool data set that has the original data. Notice that we've been able to retain the ID columns. They weren't, if we did not set that, that, um, that step in the recipe to ID and we instead explicitly said we want to predict on these variables, that call, those two columns would have been dropped, but they're now there. So now we have this test data set, and what can we do with it? We can make some um, observations of how well we did. First would be a confusion matrix. So we have a predicted class, and we have the actual observations. We see that the model did pretty darn well. Um, in four cases, it predicted a Dele when it was actually a chin strap. Uh, other than that, um, did pretty well. It got all the Gen 2s right. It got, yeah. Uh, so yeah, did pretty well. Uh, we can also then uh, plot, rather, our um, ROC, our so receiving operate, operating characteristic curve, receiver operating characteristic curve. Um, we can plot those by looking at the ground truth, which is species. And then we're plotting against three different classes. So we're going to just call those out explicitly as, hey, within these columns, this is the probability of this being um, that class relative to the ground truth of species. And so when we do that, we get three ROC curves that'll show up in the window. And there, obviously, we see that the Gen 2 is a ROC curve that has an area under the curve of one. It's all the way up to the left corner. So basically saying it didn't get anything wrong. It's 100%. And then, obviously, we see a little bit less um, success rate with the Adele and the chin strap. Uh, these are still, obviously, very good-looking ROC curves. They're very far away from the dashed line, which is basically a uh, intercept of zero and a slope of one, which would basically be that your model is no better than just flipping a coin, random guessing. Uh, obviously, if it's to the right of that line, it means that your model is actually confidently predicting the wrong way. Um, these are very good models, so we see that we have our nice uh, uh, three ROC curves that we could print out and um, you know take for a report or something like that yep and take it take it going forward maybe you can use this to to look at variable importance or, or do whatever it's maybe base so it's going to give you probability uh but yeah so there you go now uh now you know how to apply naive bays in the tidy models framework and and make predictions as to which penguins uh <laughs> which penguins you got you or whatever know. topic you're working yes with. exactly <laughs> all right so with that i guess we're going to call it this was a very quick episode Thank you all so much for joining us for this uh, latest installment. Uh, as always, my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And the screencast is on Twitter as well at, at tidy underscore explained. We're also available to be reached through Gmail, tidy.explained at gmail.com. Opening up issues on the GitHub repo works as well if you'd like to get in contact with us. And uh, as always, it's super helpful if you like what we're doing, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel, drop a comment in there. Um, if you're super excited about what we're doing and you want to buy us a beer or coffee, uh, our Patreon link is there in the YouTube comments as well. Um, other than that, that's all we got. That's all we got. So Patreon dot com slash tidy underscore explained thank you all so much and uh keep on exploring your world